This show is weird. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 119th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the seventh episode of season three titled Ninja Quest Part Four. We begin this episode right where we left off. Rito is attacking the city and the Rangers are calling out their ninja zords. Alpha and Zoran see that they're in control of the new zords and they reassure the audience that they're going to win. Story checks out because the individual zords start attacking Rito, each hitting him with absolutely no issue. Zed is pissed about this entire situation because they force the Rangers to just upgrade. Rita tells him to chill out because the vampire's egg is still hatching which leads to us seeing it hatch. At the junior police patrol, Lieutenant Stone explains that they're about to do an obstacle course, and once again, he keeps talking like he's gonna run a train on these guys. Anyways, now the Rangers are struggling against Rito briefly before he just turns his arm into a damn cannon out of nowhere. It's okay though, because the Rangers just start forming the Ninja Megazord without even saying a word to each other. Then they use the ape and wolf fists in the most seizure-rific attack ever. The Falcon comes screaming in and attaches itself to the Ninja Megazord, forming the Mega Ninja Falcon Zord. Rito briefly tries to fly up in the air to attack them, but yet another seizuristic attack hits him back down. He then just blows up, but we hear Rito saying that he's just running away. That was clearly a death. On the moon, Zed screams at Rito for sucking because he messed up. Back to the obstacle course of the Angel Grove Junior Police Patrol, and we see like Two full minutes of Bulk and Skull working out to a song called Shape It Up Bulk and Skull. Why? The vampires has hatched completely, and Rita says that they should have him destroy Ninjor so that they can destroy the newfound powers. This is when we find out that Vampires has the same voice as Fang from Season 1. In the command center, the rangers are taking turns putting back together the pieces of the command center when the alarms start to go off. They can't find the point of disturbance, but their solar system scanner isn't working so they know it's not on Earth because they've looked at the youth center and, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's, I guess that's fine. Anyways, Bulk and Skull are still training and slacking off, getting stuck in cacti. They try to hide in a tunnel and Stone finds them there too. I don't care about this at all. Vampirus is outside of the temple and Ninjor comes out, talking smack to him. Zed and Rita decide to take this opportunity to make their monster grow giant, and Ninjor just grows giant on his own. So, is the Desert of Despair on, like, Earth, or what? In the command center, Billy repairs everything, and the alarms go off. They see the vampire's monster is giant and fighting Ninjor by the temple. Zordon explains that if the temple or Ninjor gets destroyed, they're totally screwed. Left that bet out before, huh, Zordon? It's morphin' time. They call out their damn ninja zords all over again, but this time we clearly see that they're in front of a lake with parameters for swimming. Seriously, where the hell is this damn desert? Meanwhile, Ninjor clearly doesn't need any help because he's zooming around and also flying around on like a giant cloud. Then the vampire's monster transfers him elsewhere, I guess. Suddenly, Ninjor is just on the ground and then he gets up, talking about how angry he is, and he yells, Ninja power now! And he just totally transforms into a samurai motif? Is there even a name for this mode? He attacks the vampires before the rangers bring together their zords, forming the Mega Ninja Falcon Zord. And with Ninjor firing an energy ball and another seizureific attack, the vampires is dead. At the command center, Zordon asks them to observe the viewing globe. And Ninjor is looking in the wrong direction. Is there just a camera set up in his temple? I'm so confused by this episode. Zordon says that Ninjor is now in an alliance with the rangers and he can be called upon as needed or, you know, whenever the Japanese footage calls for it. At the Angel Grove Police Academy, the rookies are graduating and Tommy has this gay ass braid in his hair. Of course, Bulk and Skull turn around and knock over the entire procession before Lieutenant Stone just jabs them with their badges, telling them that they're going to be doing parking lot duty for the rest of their lives. We end this episode with an extended scene from the training montage for Bulk and Skull. The end. Man, where to begin? I mean, as a whole, this four-parter does exactly what it needs to. It sets up everything that's going to be different about Season 3 fairly well, but they kind of fumbled at the finish line here. Honestly, it feels like this part could have finished about 5 minutes into the episode, and the rest was just a bit shorter, more condensed version of an episode where they fought the Vampirus monster. It's a shame because it was doing so well beforehand, but eh, what can you do? Other than that, yeah, Bulk and Skull are now police officers somehow. Well, junior police officers, since they're still going to high school, I guess. So, 
With all that being said, how will the first normal episode of season three go? Find time, but until then, may the power protect you.